Okay. Steve Hyatt, S T E V E H I A T T. Okay, what is your title? Steve? Detective Sergeant. Ball State University. Ball State University Police. Okay. Ready to go? We're rolling. Go ahead. Steve, how long have you been with Ball State University? I hired in here in, a, in the fall of 1981. What was your original position? A patrolman. What's your current position? Detective Sergeant. How long have you been a Detective Sergeant? About seven or eight years now. Okay. Where did you get your undergraduate at? Uh, I have no undergraduate work. College work? No. Okay. Uh, hometown? Muncie, Indiana. How old are you? 20, uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> We're going to have to edit that, aren't we? Uh, I'm 42 years old. 42 years old. High school? Uh, Yorktown. Yorktown High School. You currently reside in? Uh, Delaware County. Okay. Uh, we're talking about the investigation started up. How long have you been a part of this investigation? Oh, actually, the, uh, the, this part of the investigation started the uh, morning of uh, February 9th. And tell me how it began in, in your mind that the day it happened. Uh, actually, just driving down the road, overheard some radio traffic through the ambulance service. Uh, traffic was somewhat suspicious. I recognized the location they were responding to. The nature of the call was a burn victim. Um, and I had uh, previous information about the person that was burnt from a, from a past uh, encounter. And uh, that's kind of the way it started. It was just, uh, just an accident, a luck. I just happened to be there and heard the radio traffic. Now, did you proceed to the hospital at that point? Uh, actually, I proceeded back here. He was still en route. He was in the ambulance. Uh, contacted uh, an agent down in Indianapolis at uh, Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms. And then from there, we went over and conducted a very brief interview uh, while they were working on him at the emergency room. Now, at that first interview, did you know you had something solid at that point? No, not at all. Uh, the injuries were suspicious, but we, we really had no definite hard evidence that he was involved in an arson. Mm -hmm. How many days did it take you to uh, develop that link? Uh, within the first, uh, first three or four days, we had some pretty good evidence, uh, the, a location of a fire and circumstances that would explain what we had seen uh, as far as the injuries. And uh, so it, it was a matter of 48, maybe 48, 72 hours. How long was before you contacted the federal authorities? I contacted them right away. Uh, just, just shortly after I heard the radio traffic, I drove back here, got on the phone, and uh, made contact with them right away. What was their initial uh, feelings about it? Uh, the same as mine. It was uh, suspicious, and uh, they wanted to look into it. Mm -hmm. Now, what were your feelings when it started to come together in the ensuing weeks? Uh, it became a little overwhelming uh, at first. This is not something you typically run into every day. Uh, this may be a once-in-a-lifetime uh, type case. But, uh, but it, you settle down and you, you, and you go to work. Would you describe this as your only case for those uh, two, three weeks at that point? It became the priority for the first week anyway. And, uh, and then I have uh, other detectives that were assisting with my routine caseload. But uh, yeah, it took up a great deal of time. And what were the feelings among your fellow officers from your standpoint about this case? Uh, actually, I uh, uh, had a lot of support. Uh, Early on, there wasn't a lot of information given out. A lot of them didn't even know what was going on. It was, uh, uh, which is common in this type of investigation. But uh, had a lot of support, both uh, locally and uh, from my uh, friends down at the ATF in Indianapolis. How long do you expect this investigation to go on? Uh, uh, judging from what I saw on the news last night on television, and uh, depending on how far-reaching this uh, this really is. This could go on for, for months, uh, several months, if not years. What does this mean to you personally when you break a case like this, when you're the first person there? It's, uh, again, it's a little overwhelming. Uh, there's a, a whole batch of emotions you go through. Uh, embarrassment uh, because of the recognition. This is kind of embarrassing. Uh, uh, joyful because, oh, I did it. Uh, so it, it just, you go through a whole range of emotions. Have you been through anything like this before? I have been through similar cases uh, locally. Uh, worked with the city county homicide team for a while. Have been invest helped investigate homicides over the years, and those are pretty big cases. Things like that. But uh, this may be the biggest one I've ever worked on. Um, are you a religious person? And not overly, but 
Uh, yeah, I, uh, yes. Is there any personal connection to seeing, a, a, trying to catch a person who's burned down all these churches across the United States? Uh, I, I really, yes. I, I, think it's a, I think it's a very good thing and he has affected, uh, if in fact he's proven guilty, well, you know, has affected many, many lives. And, uh, and I'm glad we, we made the contacts and, and, and got him off the street. Have you heard anything else from any church groups here in the area about this so far? No, I have not. Okay. Um, Tim, any other? Anything? It's kind of unusual. We were looking through the list of the Department of Justice uh, press release, and it, you know, it says you know FBI, Department of Justice, and all these county sheriffs and everything, and all of a sudden, Ball State University Police. That's kind of unusual, isn't it, for University Police Department to be involved in something like that? Well, it, it happens. Uh, our jurisdiction isn't obviously isn't as big as theirs or widespread, but uh, when things like this happen and they come onto our campus, we like to think we have a handle on what's going on and and and. Uh, and be able to take care of business. A lot of times you hear uh, police police officers like reporters and other people in other fields having hunches. Would you describe this as a hunch or a little bit more than that? Uh, a little bit more than that because I had some previous knowledge but uh, initially it was uh, it was just a hunch. We had a we had a, a strange set of circumstances surrounding this type this injury and uh, this type of thing. It just it, it raises eyebrows. Mm -hmm. Now, would you describe it as a light bulb going off or a bubble bursting in your head? Um, probably like a light bulb going off. It was like, I know that. I know that address. And it took me a few minutes to put two and two together, but, but it finally came together. Mm -hmm. Did you smile real big to yourself or hit the I, gas? <laughs> I think I hit the gas. I, I got back here pretty quick to get on the phone. Mm -hmm. uh, What's your boss think about all this? Uh, well, I think he's pretty happy. Uh, I think they're pretty proud of what's going on and our involvement and the, the fact that it's uh, come to some closure in a timely fashion. It, this is, uh, we're only about 15 days into this or so, a couple of weeks, and, and uh, it's been a good experience and things have come together well. Uh, do you see yourself being taken away from the university a lot for a potential trial and further investigations? No, my involvement uh, initially is uh, is really pretty small. I don't foresee myself being uh, taken away for any length of time for testimony or anything like that. Uh, the The people that have done the the digging and the investigative work on these cases are the the ATF officers, the special agents in Indianapolis and uh, the FBI and, and the local agencies where these fires occurred, they're the people that are going to make or break this case, not me. Okay. Tim, anything else? Anything else you'd like to add? No, I don't think so. Is that okay, Tim? That's good. Mike Terry, Steve Hyatt. Okay. Yes. Oh, really? Okay. So how are things down at Muncie Fire? <laughs> What's that? Okay, I'll try not to do that.
so happens the guy I call likes to talk. I have to do that this morning. You guys have got me behind. <laughs> Typical fashion, Ball State won't let me uh, won't let me in this morning. Well, that's what's going on today. They, uh, they, they're, they're doing that right now, as a matter of fact. Yeah, well, they're in the office here doing that right now. <laughs> Where are you at? You want me to have her call you? Okay, I'll have her give you a holler. All right, bye. Overpaid secretary. <laughs>